if you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or any cheap PC games, use the referral link in the description. It will take you over to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods. And if you use the code CHEZ at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to another transfer talk video. There are a couple of notable exceptions from this one, especially one that was heavily mentioned in the comment section of the previous video. The transfer talk revolving around Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to Manchester City for a rumoured £58 million has kind of cooled off over the past few days. There hasn't really been much talk about it recently and obviously if the move does go through or uh, everything starts to uh, to speed up again with that particular move, then I'll, uh, I'll deal with it in a future video and all also, including Manchester City again, actually, is Leroy Sané. That obviously was rumoured to be £40 million, but Schalke have come out today and said that there's been no contact. Schalke uh, remain confident of keeping Leroy Sané at the club. There's been no talks with Manchester City. And again, if that move develops, then we'll cover it here in the Transfer Talk series. But uh, today we have three things to talk about. Two of them have happened in the last 24 hours, and one is a very strong rumour. We'll start with the, as far as I'm concerned, best deal of the three, which is a free signing for West Ham United of Sofian Fagouli from Valencia. His contract ran out at the Spanish club, or runs out, on July the 1st or June the 31st, I suppose, and he'll move on July the 1st to West Ham on a three-year deal. I'm not entirely too sure why Valencia have let him go. Personally, I think he's an extremely good player. I was very impressed with him at the World Cup in 2014 for Algeria. He was involved in the French youth system, but uh, decided to play for Algeria at the national level. He's been at Valencia for, or was at Valencia, I suppose now you should say, in the past tense, for six years. And uh, as far as I was concerned, he was a pretty damned good player for them. So I am very surprised that uh, they've let him go because he didn't play necessarily as much last year as he had done in previous years. And after looking at his uh, his you know kind of goal figures etc. and the uh, the amount of games he's played, he probably wasn't as influential either last season as he had been in the previous three or four. But he was still pretty heavily involved in uh, Europe and. Uh, in La Liga playing over half of the La Liga games and getting into double figures in games in Europe and did score four goals in uh, the Champions League as well for Valencia so I am quite surprised that they let him go especially on a free I'd have thought he'd have been worth having uh, having around as a squad player for the next few years unless perhaps Valencia have got something in the works with regards a replacement but from West Ham's point of view, this is a fantastic transfer. They've been signing some great players over the past couple of years. And obviously with the move to the, Olymp to the Olympic stadium as well, they're going to continue their growth with uh, one of the, the most exciting young... Well, I say young. He's probably about 26 though, isn't he? Let me quickly check. Yeah, he's 26 years old. So uh, he's not young, but still, his best years are ahead of him, you think with uh, the standard of football he's been playing over the past two or three seasons. So if you're a West Ham fan, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the signing of Sofian Fagouli. Personally, I think he's going to be absolutely brilliant for you. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play in the Barclays Premier League. The second confirmed transfer that went through... Uh, in the last 24 hours. This one was done yesterday, I believe. The Faguli deal was done this afternoon or was announced this afternoon. As you see this, probably around about 8 o'clock on Wednesday, on uh, Tuesday evening. But uh, yeah, the deal last night that was done for around about £24.5 million was Miriam... Miriam... Ugh, I'll start that again. was a Miralem Pjanic to Juventus from Roma, which is a massive, massive transfer for both clubs in the grand scheme of things. Pjanic was a fantastic player for Roma for the entirety of his spell at the club. He was there for five years, from 2011 till uh, 2016, obviously now, as he's moved to Juventus for £25 million or so. But uh, arguably last year was his best season of his career. Obviously he had a couple of very good years when he was at Lyon towards the end of the uh, uh, the noughties, I guess, the 20. 2009 and 2010 seasons uh, were particularly impressive for him and then he came into Roma and slotted straight into the first team and has been superb a very consistent performer for them every single year and like I say culminating in arguably his best uh, season of his entire career to this point he's been very very good for Bosnia as well obviously at international level but I think this is a brilliant brilliant deal for Juventus how he's going to fit into the system, I'm not entirely too sure. Whether they'll end up dropping a player from the starting lineup and putting him in alongside someone else, I don't know. He may be perhaps a replacement, a long term replacement for Marchisio, although Pianic is 26 and Marchisio is around about 30, so there's not too much between them. 
but you'd have to say a midfield partnership of Pjanic and Pogba. Maybe in a midfield trio of Pjanic, Pogba and Marquisio just sounds absolutely phenomenal. Maybe he's kind of like a replacement for Arturo Vidal a year later. Maybe they just had to wait to get him away from Roma and uh, and replace Arturo, who obviously went to Bayern Munich uh, last year. But Pjanic is such a good player. Uh, Juventus just go from strength to strength. They've won, what, five Serie A titles in a row? It may be four, but they've won... They've just stormed the league the past few years, as have Bayern Munich in Germany, of course. The two strongest sides domestically in uh, in Europe right now, other than obviously PSG, who uh, continue to go from strength to strength in France as well. But uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Can Pjanic help Juventus get back to the top of European football as well? They obviously got to the final uh, last year, but weren't able, or the season before last, you know what I mean, last year is in uh, 2015. 14 15 season rather than last calendar year, rather than last football year, then basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but can he help get Juventus back to the top of European football? It's been a very long time since they, uh, they last won the Champions League, and I'm sure Pjanic will add something to that team and they'll be able to go on and no doubt win another Scudetto in Italy and maybe, maybe push for a Champions League title in the next couple of years as well. Again, you guys will have to let me know what you think about that deal in the comments section down below. If you're a Roma fan, you're probably absolutely gutted to uh, be losing Miral Pjanic. Apparently as well, uh, rumour has it that uh, Eden Hazard has been trying to convince uh, Rajan Angolan as well from Roma. Uh, both Thibaut Courtois and Eden Hazard have supposedly, it's all alleged rumours, but uh, supposedly been trying to persuade Rajan Nangolan to come to Chelsea from Roma. So if Roma end up losing Pjanic and Nangolan in the same transfer window, they'd be absolutely devastated, I'd, be, I'd imagine, because they're two of their best players. But we'll move on from that particular deal to the third and final deal that is still just a strong rumour. Nothing has actually gone through yet. However, you probably already know who it is from the thumbnail. I'll bring his image up now for you so you can see. And the player in question is Samuel Umtiti. Obviously, he's at Lyon right now. And I can't say as I know too much about him. He's widely regarded as one of the best prospects coming out of France at centre-back, alongside Laporte and Kurt Zouma, of course, and Raphael Varane. France have got such a fantastic set of youth players coming through right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Umtiti is uh, a consistent performer for Lyon. Like I say, I haven't seen him play that much, so I'm not sure how good he is talent-wise, but prospect-wise, he's supposedly going to be absolutely brilliant. He's been first team for Lyon for four years. He's, I think he's been at the club for five after coming up from the youth side, but he's only really been kind of a first team player for the past four years. But he has been, but that's like since the age of 18. So clearly uh, he's good enough to be able to uh, hold a first team spot down at the age of uh, 18. So obviously he's got to have some talent in there. So uh, like I say, I don't know too much about him to be completely honest, but he was uh, brought into the Euro 2016 squad for France. He hasn't yet played for the French national side at all in his career. He's played heavily at, uh, well, under 17, all the way through to under 21 level every single year 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 but as of yet hasn't picked up his first French cap as a whole however uh, that may well be happening soon of course Koscielny is uh, the starting centre back and players like Raphael Varane and Kurt Zuma well Zuma would have been involved as would Jeremy Mathieu you suppose as uh, he picked up an injury as well which is why MTT was drafted into the French national squad for this tournament but the, the figure is supposedly around about £30 million the Frenchman's Rumoured to have agreed a deal to move to uh, Barcelona next season, but we're not sure yet whether Leon would uh, actually let him go for anything less than 30 million euros. That's the number that has been banded around. He's currently under contract at Leon until 2019, so it's not like he's uh, gonna, got a year running out on his contract and Leon are trying to cash in on him quickly before he might potentially leave on a free because he's not wanting to stay and can get a better deal elsewhere. He is still contracted at them for another three years, so they don't have to sell him if they don't want to, which is why such a large uh, figure has been banded on. On him, but to be fair, if a player is this good, supposedly, and has this good a prospect ahead of him at 22, 30 million euros really isn't that large a transfer fee, is it? To be completely honest, if PSG paid 50 million for uh, David Luiz, then 30 million for Samuel Mtiti, you'd probably say is about right. So we'll have to wait and see if that deal goes through over the next few weeks. 
Uh, obviously, like I say, it's still just a strong rumour. There hasn't been any movement there with regards a fee being agreed yet between the Spaniards and the French. We'll just have to wait and see if that progresses, as we will with the Leroy Sané to Manchester United and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, not Manchester, no, to Manchester City. Leroy Sané and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to Manchester City. Both still strongly rumoured, but no movement yet there. One thing I forgot to mention earlier as well with regards West Ham, obviously they signed Figuli on a 3 on a free. They also signed uh, Havard Nordweit, the holding midfielder from Bruce Mucci and Gladbach on a free transfer as well. So West Ham have two free transfer signings so far in this window. So they're definitely going about business in the right way, having gotten their move to the new stadium. But let me know what you think in the comment section of the three transfers that we mentioned here today. I'm Like I say, I think the two that are confirmed are fantastic deals for the clubs that have gotten their players and are actually really detrimental deals to the sides that have lost those two players, both Roma and Valencia. We'll have to wait and see if there's any movement on the Umtiti deal, either during Euro 2016 or post Euro 2016. Apparently Ibra is having a medical at uh, Manchester United after the tournament as well, having agreed personal terms. So again, when slash if that deal goes through, looking more like when, uh, we'll cover that in a transfer talk video as well. But for now, that's going to bring this video to a close. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days, including my first impressions on FIFA 17. That video went up yesterday, so make sure you check that out. And of course, any my player or AC Milan Karimo content you may have missed. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.